Good morning. Thank you for joining us. My name is Alex Janicki. I'm director of marketing here at TriStar. I'm joined by a technical specialist from PTC, Andrew Leedy. In a moment, he will be giving a brief presentation and then live demonstration on PTC Creo Simulation Live. Feel free to leave any questions during the presentation and they will be reviewed at the end. You'll also notice there is a data sheet attached to review during or after the presentation. But if you do have further questions, don't hesitate to visit us at tristar.com or contact us directly. I'm now gonna pass it to Andrew and we're gonna get started. Perfect, thank you. Hello, my name is Andrew Leedy. I am an application engineer here at PTC, and today I'll be doing a walkthrough of Simulation Live. Now, before I step into the capabilities of the extension, I would like to take a step back and talk about some of the challenges that we were hearing from our customers that really led us to this partnership with ANSYS to bring some of their simulation capabilities into Career Parametric. One of those main challenges is that analysis is just too time consuming in the early stages. When your models are in a constant state of change, it's really impossible to analyze every single one of those changes with your traditional simulation tools. So what we're seeing are engineers relying on experience and their intuition when making critical early design decisions. And this leads to just limited support for analysis-led design and optimization. We're seeing analysis is also seen as something maybe only the experts can do, or we have to do it late stage in the development cycle just because it can be expensive or it can just be uh, invasive into our overall process. And we can't actually use the actual design model many times. You need a simplified copy. We're also seeing reliances on late stage physical prototyping for their testing. You know, the prototypes are necessary to validate the performance of design, but this just leads to another disconnect between my design and analysis. Design becomes a very iterative process. First I design, then I analyze, then I'll build a prototype, then I go back to design, then we analyze, then maybe go back to design again. So it's just this constant back and forth between all these different um, people within the company and also within all these different uh, software packages that you're jumping back and forth in, be uh, in between as well. So we wanted to tackle some of those challenges with Career Simulation Live. This is bringing real-time simulation capabilities directly into our CAD environment. So it integrates ANSYS technology into Career Parametric to give engineers the power to rapidly explore and instantly understand the impact of every single design change that they make. And that's very important. Every single design change is real-time simulation. So this is a truly unified model and simulation environment. What you're seeing here and you'll see in the demonstration is exactly what you're gonna be working with with Career Simulation Live. You see the simulation on top of the actual model. This isn't another dialogue or a window that opens up. This is uh, completely integrated into the design environment, all with the, with the goal of providing instantaneous results and feedback to you. It's co uh, consistent with the rest of the Creo user interface. Anyone that has familiarity with Creo Simulate will see even some of the same icons and workflow that you're seeing up there in the ribbon, uh, it, just in that image. So it's very easy to pick up and get and uh, kind of get the ground running off of. Now a little bit of history here. So this was something, if you've ever heard of Discovery Live from Ansys, this is basically what this tool is. Ansys has acquired a CAD company called Space Claim that allowed them to do some CAD changes onto models that were being run with simulation. A lot of these changes were just some very simple things like direct changes, like oh, I want to make this thing a little bit longer, or, I want to move this wall out a little bit, or I want to thicken up this part. But this was not actual true parametric editing, and it wasn't done in the actual design environment. So if you ever wanted to push those changes back, you'd have to document the changes, go back into the CAD software, and then perform the necessary changes to get to the results that you were looking for. This is basically going in the opposite direction, though. We're integrating the simulation environment into our CAD environment this time. So that allows me to make use of all of Creo's powerful parametric and direct editing techniques while still being able to see my model simulation and get the feedback from the simulation. Multiple types of design analysis are supported within this. So it supports linear analysis and within linear analysis, it's gonna be structural, thermal, and modal. And the analysis will change based off of any changes that we make to the model, including material, or if we go back and actually change the analysis around, 
It really is built to play with a lot of different what if scenarios that I would wanted to explore early in the design process and then maybe send it off to a high end design or analysis solution at the end of the process for my final validation, but get to that point with a little more confidence. Now, this is new technology powered by ANSYS. So the solver engine is using our graphics card rather than the CPU. This does put a hardware requirement on this particular extension though. This does require an NVIDIA CUDA supported graphics card. But what this is getting us, this is why it's able to be so fast. So we're talking instead of five, 10, 15 or more minutes to run an actual simulation, we're more in the realm of just a few seconds to run the simulation, which we'll see in the demonstration here in a second. So switching gears into that demonstration, we're gonna be taking a look at a structural analysis first, and then we'll be stepping into a modal analysis as well. So we're gonna be looking at the design of this cast iron chassis on our Polaris snowmobile. Now the focus here on this demonstration is gonna be on exploring and finding the optimal design solution for this particular component that we're gonna be looking at. We could also look at the uh, uh, simulation live in the context of the entire assembly as well. So first we'll set up a structural analysis on this particular component. Now to step into simulation live, we're gonna need some actual 3D geometry and we also need to have a material applied to my actual component here. So um, over on the left in my model tree, I have my uh, material already assigned to this particular part. So stepping into simulation live, once we have a material assigned, I just go over to my live simulation tab and then I say, well, let's add in a new simulation. So it's gonna be either a modal, a thermal or a structural analysis. So we'll start off with our structural analysis here today. And what that's gonna do is just put in a new simulation over there in my simulation tree. So I already have one structural analysis running. So here's my second structural analysis and it's gonna uh, automatically default to giving me that constraint and load basically folders where I can store off uh, various different constraints and loads that I wanna set for this particular simulation. So the next thing to do is just start to apply some of those. So for constraints, I can either have a fixed, a displacement or a frictionless constraint. So we'll go over to my fixed constraints then I just have to choose my uh, geometrical references that I actually wanna apply this onto. So where is this actually gonna be fixed down to? Then I can go through and apply some of my various different types of loads. So in this case, we'll use some force loads, but I can also use my moment, pressure, gravity, and some other loads to apply onto my particular model. And again, we're just gonna use the standard Creo uh, geometry here, and I can choose exactly which X, Y, Z force components, or I can choose a magnitude and direction for that. And I can also set my units for this as well. And I can have as many different constraints and loads on one particular model or for one particular simulation if I want to. So in this case, we'll put on a separate load set. So over there on the right, I have my bolt holes. Maybe we're gonna apply a force because this is gonna be connected up to another uh, piece of equipment. So I can give that a separate YZ force component as well. And then from here, I have the basic setup for my model done. All I have to do is press run simulation. And this is gonna take about five to seven seconds. As soon as the wheel goes away on the mouse, which it just did, that basically means that I have some results that I can start looking at. So uh, it's extremely quick in generating just some initial results for my particular model. Now it's not just doing one type of result as well. So right now we're selected on our Von Misi stress, but I can also toggle onto and go into a bunch of other different ones if I want to. So I can go over and look at maybe deformation or X, Y, Z normal stress. I can dig into each of those individual result types to get the information that I need from the particular model from the particular simulation. So in this case, we were just looking at Von Mises stress. We can go over and look at deformation. That's just gonna change graphically on top of the model, change the colors around and also change my legend around to reflect that we're in that new mode. Now we're looking at deformation magnitude in millimeters. We can also look at a few other things like rendering method, maybe show minimums and maximums. So this will actually highlight on the model. In the bottom left is my minimum moment of uh, uh, where it's moved, the deformation magnitude. And on the right is my maximum deformation. So it can very easily pinpoint some problem areas on my model for me. You can also do some things like look at my deformation uh, in terms of like an animation. So this is more of like an exaggerated animation. I can also look at true deformations. So how much is it actually moving, you know, related to the, uh, to the values that are color coded on the particular part. 
So there are various different ways for me to go through, interpret this part, find some problems that I might not have seen before or very early on in the design cycle. Now, being able to get the results that fast is extremely useful. I can uh, really, without any waiting time, start to see how this model is gonna react based off of the loading conditions I place this under. But the real strength of this particular extension comes in whenever I wanna start making some changes. You know, I'm early in the design process. I have a few different routes that I wanna go through to tackle some problems and to add things onto this part. We're not even done with the, this particular component. In the traditional sense, I might make a bunch of changes and then send it off for simulation again. But this is gonna allow this, uh, Simulation Live is gonna allow the simulation to actually run in the background as I make those changes. So we'll take a look at that here. At the maximum point of my von Mises stress, I can see that this is a little bit too high for me. I wanna lower that down a little bit. This is over my design threshold. I can utilize simulation probes to actually probe on a surface or at a point to tell me what is that value. So right now we're at 55.7. Maybe my goal for this particular material is to just get that under 50 megapascals. So I just wanna start making changes on this model and just get the feedback from Career Simulation Live in terms of am I going in the right direction or not. So we can go through and just start making any changes onto this model. It could be a feature edit, it could be removing features, adding in new features. In this case, we're just using our flexible modeling module because this was originally an import part that we might've gotten from a customer or from somewhere else. And maybe I just wanna change it around. I just wanna thicken up the rib a little bit. So I could just use flexible model and say, hey, let's just move this out. But this isn't the only type of change I'm restricted to. It could be any Creo modeling change that I wanna go through. So here we moved it out a little bit. And then it's gonna take a few seconds for my simulation update. And then as soon as it's done, you'll see the new annotation displayed uh, right underneath the first one showing me my new value. And then I just keep iterating. You know, I wanna keep going pretty quickly. I wanna start changing around the radius here and see if this will push us in the right direction. And if it doesn't, all we have to do is just go back to what we had before and do another design choice. So here we edited the round. I wait a few seconds for the update and now I have my new value. Again, maybe we were shooting for 50 as our goal. So now we're safely under that threshold. So you can see how quickly we're able to step through our design process while still being simulation driven and have that in mind. Now the maximum point of my mod BC stress has moved to a separate area. So I can go through and just keep making changes onto this, maybe add in some overall strength. Now, something that we usually like to talk about when we talk about simulation live is this concept of our design exploration extension as well. For anyone who might not be familiar with what that is, this is a tool within Creo. It's an extension within Creo that allows me to manage my design environment a little bit easier. You know, typically if I'm going through this early design process, I might be creating a master copy of this uh, chassis part. And then maybe I just wanna keep making a bunch of different copies, 10 different copies of all the different iterations of this part that I wanna go into, all the different design ideas I have. And then to look at that, I'd have to clear up my session, open up a new one, make changes onto that, close out of it, clear my session, open up another uh, uh, version of the particular part. But we're going back and forth and there's a lot of different difficulty or there's a lot of difficulty in terms of managing that process. So design exploration was put into Creo as an extension to tackle that problem. What this gives me is a design checkpoint tree, which is very good for uh, simulation live because I want to be able to make a bunch of changes and manage those changes very easily. So once we have this checkpoint tree open, basically every time I get the model in a state that I like it, I just say, hey, save checkpoint. And now that will snapshot the model exactly as it, as it is in that particular component. And if I ever want to come back to it, all I have to do is go over to my checkpoint tree and double click on that, uh, on that checkpoint and it will reload the model exactly as it was how I had saved it. So we'll use that very quickly to go through and do some more changes onto this model. So I wanna add in a little more strength. I have a few ideas in terms of how we're gonna be doing that. Uh, the first idea is just gonna be this rib that we're gonna be putting in. Uh, before I do any changes, I wanna put some simulation probes onto my model, just onto this top surface and make sure that uh, maybe we're concerned about this surface, the stress going up too much as we try to add in some strength further down in the part. And then I'll go through and start making some changes. Again, this could be any Creo change. In this case, we'll just put in a trajectory rib on this existing sketch. We'll go through, edit the definition of that, edit the dimensions, go through, add in some rounds here as well, and otherwise just accept it off when it's okay. And same story as it was before, adding in a new feature. We just wait for Creo Simulation to finish the update, 
And then I have the new value for my simulation or for my design probe over there. Now, if I have the model exactly as I like with design exploration, all I say is, hey, save the checkpoint. I want to come back to this later. And then that adds it into my tree. And then as I keep going through here and I start adding more and more checkpoints, I know that I can always come back to the model exactly as it was in this particular case, whether it's going to be for a design review or maybe I just want to come and expand upon this idea a little bit later. But if I don't like what I'm doing and I ever want to just revert back to where I was before, uh, all I have to do is exit out of design exploration or go back to my entry checkpoint in the design tree. And that will put me back out of design exploration to the start of my model exactly as it was before. My simulation probes can all be managed from the analysis tab. I can choose to keep them or delete them if necessary. Now that was career simulation live at the part level. We could also look at this at the assembly level as well. So here I have a separate simulation study set up for a bunch of different components together. We have some fixed constraints that are pretty much in the same location that that chassis component we were working with, uh, we had placed that at. We also have two separate force components that are applying different values onto this particular part based off of how this is realistically gonna be loaded up. Same story as at the part level though, as soon as we have that, uh, that beginning work done, the constraints and load set, all I have to do is say run simulation and I can start to see the results populate on top of the actual model. Now, since this is an assembly, it will take a little bit longer to get to a final answer. You can see over there on the legend, it's starting to hone in on, a, on, a, on an exact value, and it will continue to do, to do that until it reaches kind of that steady state. Uh, we can also look at rendering methods, which is something we didn't look at before. Before, we were just looking at surface. So basically, the surface that I'm looking straight on in, in Creo, what is the color-coded value for the particular value of the result type I'm looking at at that surface? We can also look at things like inverse, invert surface, always show me what's behind the one I'm looking at. Max value, doesn't matter if it's in front or behind, just bring the color forward. So you can see some of the higher stress values that are located behind the component that I'm currently looking at that are being drawn forward. The different rendering methods basically are, are just allowing me to more easily see some of the problem areas that I might not have been able to notice beforehand, just looking straight on at a surface. So particularly useful for a component like this. It's a little bit big. I don't have to keep rotating this whole thing around, just trying to find where the red spots are. Just pull all those colors forward. Same thing with deformation, be able to pull that forward as well. I could also at the assembly level animate this. So if I wanna be able to see how it's deforming, again, always we can turn on our true deformation as well if we wanna see how much it's actually deforming. I see a millimeter is how much it's actually moving. So uh, get a good idea of all the areas that it's deforming uh, on this particular component. So now we want to make a change onto this assembly as well. And again, this could be any change, a change on the part level of one of these components. In this case, we're going to be looking at an actual overall assembly change and adding in some additional parts into this assembly. But I can always just use those simulation probes to keep track of certain values of interest. Like here's my maximum. I want to be able to see how much this is going to change as we add in some components. And we already had some pieces assembled in here. I just suppressed them off. So if we go back, exit insert mode, I can see what the simulation is gonna do with those new components and those new assemblies loaded in here as well. And once again, since it's an assembly, it will take a little bit longer, but it's gonna give us that final answer for my deformation as soon as it uh, hones in on an answer. So now that was the setup and run for a structural analysis. As I also said, we also support thermal and modal. So just show an example of that. A modal analysis is set up in a very similar manner, just applying some constraints onto this model. And then the different modes can be toggled in my result types. So we'll constrain this exactly as we had done before, where this is going to be kind of held down in our ideal scenario. Just utilizing the actual career geometry to do that. OK that off out of that dialog menu. We'll insert uh, behind that assembly that we had added in before just to show an overall assembly change at the end of this process. But same story, we just click run simulation. It's gonna take a few seconds to be able to run through and give us an answer. You can see over there on the ribbon, the overall progress as it's moving, but uh, it, it gets pretty close, pretty fast. And then it starts to kind of work on those last few digits uh, as it goes through and, and finalizes. Now, as I had said, for modal analysis, we're concerned uh, about a few different things uh, separately than we would be for a structural analysis. I could still go look at my deformation moving around. 
but for uh, modal analysis, we're concerned about the different modes that this is going to be operating under. So those can all be toggled. They're all solved at once, and I can look at them in my result display menu, and then I can go over and see the magnitude of the uh, frequency associated with that particular mode. And then once again, to show a change here, the real strength of this comes from when I want to keep iterating and I want to always have the simulation running in the background. I exit insert mode and it's going to recalculate my overall simulation and then give me a new result based off of uh, these new conditions I have the model placed under. And once again, I can go through deform this overall uh, part to see how it's going to change. And then I can always go back and change the mode around and look at different modes if necessary. So here's a mode of one, see how that looks, see what the deformation magnitude uh, for the frequency is gonna be, and then maybe I can stop the deformation overall if necessary. So that was the setup and the running of a modal analysis as well. So now just to finalize and, and kind of go back over and talk about what we had seen today, just kind of wrap up here. The real value of Career Simulation Live is how early and how often we're gonna be able to run analysis with this extension. It's truly bridging the gap between analysis and design. We're not seeing it as separate realms anymore. We're integrating them completely together, allowing me to design and simulate at the exact same time. And if I need to do those final validation simulates with a very high-end tool that the expert's gonna to need to be able to run through and set up, that's okay. But this allows basically any engineer, any Creo user to be able to go through, set up and run some of these simple types of analysis, these linear analysis. And all with the goal of getting our products out at a faster uh, rate and at a higher quality. Allow us to catch some of these problems that we're seeing a lot earlier, early in the design phase where an engineer can very easily tackle it and don't have to worry about some of those late stage reworks that we might've had to do in the past. So that is Creo Simulation Live. Now we have a few minutes here if there are any questions in the chat, um, but otherwise, uh, thank you for coming to the webinar today. Great information and demo, thank you, Andrew. It does look like we have one question, but I'll wait a moment for more. But the first one is, can, uh, Design exploration, can it be integrated into Windchill? Into what? Windchill. Oh, so it, all the work that you're doing within this simulation live. Oh, design exploration, you said? Yeah, so what design exploration makes at the end of the process is just a single file. And the file saves off the delta of all the changes that you made. So if you have 10 different checkpoints, all that single file is doing is changing or is saving off what was necessary to get to all those different checkpoints from your original file. So that is, it's a separate file, but it can be uploaded into Windshield just as you can any of your Creo files. So you basically would just, if you want to pass it over to someone else within Windshield, they would just need to download the actual part file and then the design file, the design exploration file that went along with it. Okay, excellent. Um, follow up to that. Uh, Is there any quick uh, tests on thermal analysis that you can show? Yes, yes, give me one second. Um. All right, let him pull that up. Okay. So thermal analysis is gonna look pretty similar to what we did before. It's just uh, kind of a different story in terms of the actual setup here. So in this case, we're, we have an engine part for the same Polaris snowmobile we were looking at before. So in this case, we'll do the setup of the thermal analysis. So head over to the live simulation tab. In this case, they've already gone through and added in some of the different boundary conditions and some of the different loads. So again, it's, it's a similar story. We're still using the career geometry to apply a bunch of these different things. It's just a different methodology, you know, for we're not doing constraints, we're doing prescribed temperature and convection boundary conditions. And for our loads, we're not doing, uh, we're not doing force loads, we're doing heat flow and heat flux. So uh, here we've already gone through, selected some of the geometry for our convection condition that we're placing on the model. And then there's a few different options. You can you know, change the convection coefficient of the bulk temperature associated onto this as well. And then uh, we can always go through and modify those if necessary, change the units around also. 
And then we could also apply some new loads onto this part. So if we wanna do like a heat flow, again, it's just selecting on uh, different components that we want to apply that onto. And, and something I didn't show in this demonstration either, was you don't have to use the career geometry only that you can also use like a datum point to apply a load onto if you need to apply um, something that you know it, it might not exist on the particular part or you want to just pinpoint a particular area you can do that as well so here we have the setup for this particular component done so now i have my heat flow load condition and then since i have that already set up we can go through and just say run simulation once again, it'll take a few seconds to go through and actually finalize onto the answer, but uh, this one's a lot quicker than the other one actually. It was only uh, just a few seconds there and I could start to see some of the results of that particular analysis. So that's the setup and the run for the thermal analysis as well. Excellent, thank you for that additional demonstration. Um, does look like that's all of our questions unless there's any follow-ups. Um, I will mention everyone who registered will receive a replay that they can watch of this demo and presentation at any time. And again, if you have any questions, wanting for more, more information, just contact us here at TriStar. And thank you again for everyone for joining us and enjoy the rest of your week. Okay, thank you, see ya.